Good afternoon, sports fans. This is George with Custom Todd Flies and Guide Service. And uh, I'm going to do a tutorial for you on the uh, articulated Helgi Helgramite. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, when it's done, it's going to look something like this. Hmm. Um, the recipe calls for, uh, of course, your hook. And I do these in a, in a 6 down to a 10. Um, it's, uh, the rear hook is a Mustad 9672. And the front hook is a Mustad 3906B. Um, of course, the thread, I'm using Danville Flymaster 140D in black. The... Underbody is uh, stripped down acrylic yarn. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, you make humps with it, and I'll show you that. The overbody is uh, Cohen's Creatures in uh, Helgramite, and that comes in small, medium, and large. This is a medium size. The um, dubbing I'm using, I had to blend the dubbing myself. It's a blend of olive squirrel, olive nutria, and olive rabbit. And uh, blend it all together and kind of looks like this. <clears throat> um, the articulate wire is uh let me see if i can find the package here oh here it is it's uh hairlines senyo um intruder trailer hook wire uh <clears throat> excuse me in black the uh the head uh is the I uh, get these from Flymen. It's the Nymph Head Evolution in a Stonefly. Uh, this is a medium one, but uh, they come in small, medium, and large. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The uh, And you're going to color the segments with uh, Sharpies. The, uh, the rear segment, I take... Uh, uh, an olive colored marker and I get the back the bottom side and then the top side and then I take a, a goldenrod colored uh, sharpie and color the back and then Take a black Sharpie and color the legs on the front and on the back. <clears throat> you don't really have to worry about color in the bottom because it's all going to get folded down across the dubbing. Um, so, and then after you got all that, you're going to coat the thing with some UV resin. You build the articulated humps um, with uh, Solarez Bone Dry Plus. And then you paint the whole thing over with the uh, um, Solarez um, Bone Dry uh, with the applicator brush. <clears throat> so after you mount. You're going to take your black Flymaster thread, tie in. You can tie in up at the eye or somewhere in the middle or whatever. But you're going to run that thread all the way to the top of the bend. And you might have to readjust your fly in the jaws. Ordinarily, I tie on a... Uh, Renzetti Traveler, 
but I had to get my peak out because it comes with mids jaws and these jaws are designed differently than the traveler so it gives me a little more room to work uh, so you're going to make a dubbing ball in the back now this just use a uh, little saliva to get that to stick um, I I don't often use uh, wax, dubbing wax. I just use saliva. Uh, get you a little, good little rope here, two or three inches long. Pull this back out of the way, and then get you a dubbing ball. Okay, now you can level the hook up. Now, like I said, um, I'm using acrylic yarn. Uh, this is the kind of yarn that you use for like plastic canvas. And uh, when it strips, Strips into uh, two strands pretty easily, right? But then each one of those strands will strip also. And that's what you're looking for. Oh. <clears throat> Try not to drop it on the deck. <laughs> so you just separate that best you can this may be a little time consuming but it's pretty important now you can use other kind of yarn it may not be this challenging to work with Try the other end. There we go. See how that's just kind of splits apart. And then it'll get to a point where it's kind of clogged up and you know you got to fool with it and so forth until you get it all stripped out and when it's stripped out it looks like this and just tie that in towards the middle run it all the way back to the dubbing ball and bring the thread thread forward and you're going to give this acrylic yarn a couple of twists to get it to behave the way you want it to and you kind of stack that up I usually use like four turns and then come back you're kind of building that up like you would like if you're making a fur body ant with uh dubbing this is what's going to give you your segments when it's all done with and you're going to get three or four uh, bumps on here you need at least three sometimes you get a bonus and you get four Just depends on how big bumps you make, how how long they are on the hook. And 
Looks like I might be able to get four on this one. Yep, I think I will. Don't worry about that, those yarn frays. You can just trim those off in a minute. Okay. Now give your thread a spin because you want to. You want your thread tight. You're just going to go back over top of these and uh, make like an X over top of the dubbing ball or over top of the little balls that you made. So you just kind of hold them in place. Mm -hmm. All right, and you're gonna you'll get all the way up in there, and then get up past that dubbing ball. <coughs> Excuse me, and take your fly out of the vise, bring your body down. Put it back in the vise. <clears throat> Your first move here is to bring your thread up to get the rearmost set of legs. And the first segment taken care of. Okay. Then add some dubbing. That's a chunk of something that's not supposed to be in there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sometimes you got to use your bodkin to hold that those legs out of the way. A little more dubbing.
And you just keep moving forward, covering that acrylic yarn up with the dubbing. See, I use the acrylic yarn uh, as underbody um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, it's um, it sucks water, uh, and uh, so does the dubbing. So instead of blowing a a bunch of dubbing, making these great big dubbing balls. Um, I use the yarn as an underbody and then cover those yarn balls with dubbing. Now, that way I'm conserving my dubbing because dubbing is way more expensive than yarn. Just keep coming forward. You see when it, I didn't point that out before. You see how the, the tie down points are right behind each set of legs. Mm-mm. <clears throat>
All right. All right, that's the first part. Now comes the rest of the coloring. Make sure you got your legs straight. And take my goldenrod sharpie. And go back through and color over these segments again. And then uh, see how the leading edge of those legs is white, right? Well. You don't want that, so color that in with a black Sharpie. Anywhere you see white, you want to hit it with your Sharpie. It's okay if you get Sharpie on the dubbing. It doesn't really matter. Okay. <clears throat> now, each one of these segments gets a black stripe that connects each of the legs. When you look at the natural, it has not just uh, segments, but it's got humps. All right. Now. All right. Then you're going to take your paintbrush and you just put a thin coat.
before you zap this with the light, I want to make sure that your legs are sticking out the way you want them to, because once you zap them with the light, that's it. All right, now, the tail, see how the tail's sticking out there past the back of the hook? It's got a segment on it, too, so connect those legs with your black Sharpie. Do that on both sides. This gives you another chance to kind of QC if you see white on the legs. Okay, flip that over. And there you go. There's the back. Sit that off to the side for a minute. Now, excuse me. These, uh, as far as these little stonefly nymph heads go, so um, I got my uh, 3906 wet fly hook. And uh, I just slide the stonefly nymph thing on there. And I, I put a little thread uh, spot uh, underneath of where the head is going to go. And then I put a little dab of super glue on there and slide that sucker up in there and let it sit off to dry. And uh, try not to drop them on the ground. <sighs> All right. Back to your thread base. Now you got your piece of wire. Just hold your piece of wire you want to try your best to get it to not twist on you because that's bad when it twists on you
Now this here, this is where I use my old scissors and I get in there and I chop that off. There you go. There's the articulated rear part. And I like to just give that a a coat of head cement. go now <clears throat> this is your head see it's this is your head it's gonna go on it goes on it gets glued on top of this um on top of your uh head thing here Okay, so you, you want to make sure that you're allowing space for that. So, there you go. Now, it's up to you, you know, if you want to use the, um, the acrylic wool or acrylic yarn trick, or if you want to just make dubbing balls, um, I'm going to use the acrylic yarn here. You don't really need a lot, but you do need some. That's probably enough. <clears throat>
doesn't look like the ball thing worked very well on that one. <laughs> That's all right. Do the same thing. Remember, a, uh, a Helgramite is biggest in the front. So it is. And uh, what you're essentially replicating here is a, a female Helgramite. The way her jaws are, they're very pronounced. I don't know that the fish are that selective. Um, for all I know, they don't even um, really see much of the stuff that we're you know, taking the time to put on here. Uh, you know, they might just see a a wiggly ass something or other. And um, looks like food, so, you know, they pick it up. Of course, you know, we don't really care about that. As long as they pick it up. And I don't give a crap what they think it is. Uh, it's my job to make a very strong suggestion that this hook that I have painstakingly wrapped fur and feather to, uh, it, it's my job to make sure that that suggests a food item that's available in the drift. Something that they recognize as a food item. So a Helgramite or a nymph or a crawdad. Um, you know, we tires don't really have to be that specific with all these, you know, trying to make them look exactly like the natural because uh, you're never going to make it exactly like the natural. Uh, you know, there's always going to be some kind of imperfection or flaw. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, because fish are part of the Darwinian process. Whenever something is not quite right and stands out as not quite right from the rest that are right, well they tend to get consumed and then that gets that particular um, insects genes out of the gene pool and then you don't have to worry about uh, you know later down the road that particular um, insect is going to be you know his offspring is going to be not quite right and then you end up with more that aren't quite right and aren't quite right and aren't quite quite right and the next thing you know you have some slea stack something or other that doesn't survive the birthing process so i mean that's one of the reasons why mayflies get stuck in the shuck you know they're at a point at the end of their gene cycle that they just they're not fast enough to get out of their shell or get out of their exoskeleton before they get eaten okay So as far as super glue goes, um, some people swear by this kind of super glue and that kind of super glue. 
I swear by this kind of super glue, the kind that I get at the Dollar Tree um, for two for a buck. Alrighty then. Again, you want to get your legs marked up. If you can see white, make it black. And connect the legs. I'm going to put a little drop back here where the articulation joins. And there you have it. The articulated algae algramite. Isn't that cool looking? <clears throat> Thank you for taking the time to give this a watch. Um... This and other tutorials are available on my website, uh, www.custom-tide.com. That's C-U-S-T-O-M-Tide, T-I-E-D.com. Have a splash. Don't forget the dash. Um, excuse me. If you uh, like this, please... Uh, like and subscribe, share this with your friends and neighbors, 
Um, I don't think there is another uh, tutorial on uh, YouTube that uh, describes building this bug um, in the detail that I have. I don't think. Uh, uh, excuse me. So, um, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. Happy tying.